So the other day I did a video on bleach bypass, which uh, was a little bit of a exploration and look dev. Uh, I want to continue with that theme by showcasing a technique that I've used for creating uh, cell shade um, with live action. I don't know how, how this came about, but I do remember at some point looking at uh, whether it was this exact matchbox or another filter of sorts, maybe Sapphire, of like different cell shades um, that Flame had access to, and I wasn't super impressed. Uh, I don't, I don't like how kind of blocky it is and mosaic-y. It posterized. It feels so. No matter how I kind of move these sliders, it just doesn't really give me uh, the effect that I'm going for. So. Um, I figured there must be a way for me to just kind of do it manually, which is how I started this exploration. Uh, I'm, I did not invent this. It's just, I, I think others have, have done it. So I am not taking credit for this, but, uh, I did stumble into it and it has worked for me. So I just wanted to share it with you. The goal is that I want to blur the image enough to kind of eliminate the depth. So I want to kind of compress the image and flatten it out and I'm just trying to get rid of as much like of some of the detail as I can uh, to give it a little bit more of a kind of a 2D painterly look. So that's generally the goal. I can have some color corrections at the beginning and the end if I need to depending on what I want to do with the footage but the meat of this is really right here in these three nodes where I'm gonna blur, I'm gonna do a difference, and then I'm gonna subtract. So let's just walk through it. Um, happy to show you the results that I get, and uh, hopefully you can springboard from this if you want, if you ever need something like this. So here's our source footage. Uh, and actually, let me just we'll keep this up as a context so we can always reference it. So. That's going to be our source. What we need to do to get this to work is I need to blur this image. So uh, this will be a variable that you will adjust down the road, but just know that we're just trying to kind of compress it. So I need to blur it enough that when I do a difference, we're going to actually start to see the detail separate from the image itself. So all this is our detail and that's exactly what we want because now we want to subtract from the original so that we are left with this uh, kind of painterly feel to the footage as we've started to kind of uh, flatten it out quite a bit. Now I will set this as a context and oops, when we have this now when I wind up the blur you can see how we're really going to oh. all right that's good the original is context one and now our end result will be context two all right so remember that there we go so now when i blur this we're going to start to really uh, be able to kind of take out as much of the details we want to and kind of flatten out the color. So this is probably a good starting point and I would say different enough that, you know, it's it's a little bit of of a look and then I can start to color correct it as I need to, uh, like I said before or after, so that we can really get to like maybe something that might be workable for what we're trying to do. Maybe we want to saturate a little bit more. And now if I set this as my context versus the original, you know, you'll, you'll see you have something wildly different than where you started. Does it feel like a painting? Not really, but it's, it's different. And I think when you're trying to like, just show uh, a range of of possibilities. I think this is where a technique like this is useful in your toolkit. So you can just kind of whip it up. It won't work for every piece of footage. In fact, you'll know very quickly on pieces of footage that it just does not remotely look uh, promising for. Um, 
Here's an, another good example of a piece of footage that might work well, uh, or this type of kind of balance. Uh, again, we'll set some blur. We're gonna do a difference between the original. So that's our blur layer, that's our original. We do a difference. And then we're gonna do a subtraction and we're left with a very cell looking uh, piece of video. So comparing between the two, and again, I'm just gonna keep dialing this blur until I see a result that works for me. Uh, what I don't like is this like fringe that happens, but you know, if I'm really trying to, to do this, maybe I'd separate out the front from the back. But what I do like is that, you know, you certainly start to like get a little bit of the shade that you want and you're removing out some of the kind of the highlight and uh, you're really able to kind of, um, you know, create something. Now, if I wanted to take this further, what I might do is use, um, let's see, use is it this face extraction, you know, maybe, especially because I can be um, pretty, pretty loose with this. Maybe I could, here, we'll just do this. And if I wanted to really exaggerate this for whatever reason. Uh, and now if I'm looking at my context, let's just take this down a little bit. And now, Is what we're going after, but we could start to break up her face and add as many, um, you know, exaggerations as we need to, and it'll just kind of be painted down the stream as we work through it. So, uh, I think that's it. This is cell shading, um, done super quickly and hope it's an alternative for what you might be looking for when you're trying to do some look dev on your own. Thanks everyone, bye.